Hello everyone and welcome to Blindfold Chess number 7. In this series of videos I play a blindfold chess game, which means that I won't be able to see any chess piece I will be staring at an empty chessboard. Hopefully this is going to be fun for you guys, you can see how I visualize, let's do it. Okay, we found a game, it seems like we're playing with the black pieces against Robert Precher, good luck. And our opponent plays e4, so we're gonna play e5, we have the ki double king spawn opening, and white goes for d4, the central opening, which is not very common. Normally white plays knight f3, or maybe the Vienna with knight c3, followed by f4, but now d4. And uh, usually the way people play this is by taking on d4, this is the way you punish this opening, because it's not the best. My opponent already uh, plays something that is not the central opening by playing knight f3. Queen takes d4 instead of knight f3 would have been the central opening. And after knight c6, I gain a tempo on the queen. I develop my knight, so everything's pretty natural. So uh, I would eventually get a normal position as black, so it's not so... It's not such a difficult thing to play as black. That's why white goes for knight f3, potentially transposing into some sort of scotch gambit or some Italian gambit, sacrificing d4 and followed by c3, which is classical. However, in this position, I have a very simple way of responding to this, which solves black's problems from a very practical point of view, which is playing pawn to d5. And that is giving back material. So I did get a pawn at the very beginning, as you can see in the screen. By the way, if you look over here, down, down there, you can see my screen and I can't see anything, but you have the actual position on screen of I have another tab in which it does have the position live. Don't worry, I can't see that. I'm not cheating. Why would I do that? That's why it's there for you to see this in a very easy way. But back to the game, queen takes d5. Um, I have a, a practical way of approaching this, which is if c takes d4, which once again, my opponent plays something I didn't predict, which is knight takes d4. But if c takes d4 had happened instead, I play bishop g4. And after bishop e2, I castle queenside or play knight f6, and there's at some point I play bishop b4, I take on c3, I take on f3, and I play queen c4. But that's some theory. Now, let me visualize this again, e4, e5, d4, e takes d4, knight f3, knight c6, c3, d5. Queen takes d5, queen c5. Knight takes d4 is very weird. Knight takes d4 is so weird. The first thing that I think when I see knight takes d4 happen over the board is... Well, it's not c takes d4, which is what I was aware of. So I, I'm 100% I'm sure this is not the main line of the theory. Um, but the second thought I have is, well, is this really that bad? Well, there's still a bishop on f1, so I can't take on g2. That's an important detail. I don't want to take on d4 because after c takes d4, then knight c3 may be easier. Um, well, maybe it's not that easy because I play knight f6, let's say knight c3, bishop b4, and on that line, I'm, I'm doing reasonably well. I can play queen, sorry, I can play knight f6 directly without the need of taking on d4 and potentially moving my queen. Um, but it's tough to, to measure all of these moves. I think, if anything, I would be, I would be surprised if knight f6 was a mistake. So I will go ahead and play knight f6, waiting for my opponent to see. Now if knight takes c6, I simply take with a queen. I could also take b takes c6 if, if I really need to, need it to. My opponent's pawn on c3 is going to be annoying, because now white can't play knight c3. That's the reason why I didn't take on d4. If I had taken on d4, c takes d4 gives easy development. My opponent went for bishop e2, another very enigmatic type of move, because now g2 is hanging in many lines. In this case, queen takes g2 is not working because of bishop f3. And uh, y what white is claiming is that, let's say, after queen h3, knight takes c6 is winning material. So, I would not do that. I will not do that, sorry. A natural move would be bishop d6. If bishop f3 does happen, I think I have queen c4. But b3 is in the air. So that's not very comfortable. I have to really double check here. Bishop f3 is a threat. The question becomes, well, should I take on d4 now? And if c takes d4, I have queen takes g2. And if bishop f3, I have queen h3. I think so. I'm going to take on d4, c takes d4. The question becomes, can I take on g2, whether I can or not, will we'll, we'll decide quite a lot. Or at, le at least that's my first evaluation. So if I take on g2, my opponent goes bishop f3, I go queen h3, 
Is there really enough compensation there for my opponent? What does my opponent have? My opponent has lead in development. But in, in the other, on the other side, my opponent can't castle because my queen is on h3. Um, and I, I, will, I am getting castled quite, pretty quickly. Bishop e7, castle short side, and if I can get rook e8, that would be magnificent. So, yeah, I can take on g2. I don't see why not. At bishop f3, I'm going to play queen h3. Okay, I'm going to play queen h3 now. And I think I'm pretty happy with my position. I think out of the opening with the black pieces, this is kind of a dream. I don't see white's compensation. Uh, I think this is just a pawn. And even after something like queen e2, I just block bishop e7, and, I, and I'm already threatening to castle next move. If white still has a king on e1, there's no way this is working. Um, on top of that, I have an, an knight on f6. So it's not like I, my knight is still on g8, and maybe I have a pawn on d7, or a pawn on e7, and I can't develop. I can develop, so it's not that bad. Um, knight c3, that being said, I have to be careful to convert this. I'm already assuming this is an advantage for black. So the, the next question is how to convert this into a full point conversion. So knight c3 was played by black, by white, sorry. It's my turn. Bishop b4 is a candidate move, but I already kind of rejected because of queen a4, bishop d7, queen takes b4. I have queen takes f3. It's not the end of the line. Bishop b4. Do I really want my bishop on b4? It is, it is a, an active square. Bishop takes b7 doesn't work because of bishop takes b7, queen a4, queen, a, queen d7. Okay, I'm going to play bishop b4. I don't see anything wrong with it. And if queen e2... I guess bishop e7 back. I could also play king d8, as, as weird as it looks. King d8 and rook e8. By the way, bishop f5 is another move, another move I should have considered. Because my, my knight is on f6 and my queen is on h3. So bishop g4 would trade pieces. And guess what? I'm up a pawn. So trading pieces is a good idea. Maybe I shouldn't have allowed this. Queen e2, a little bit, a little bit annoying. Completely honest. Bishop e6. Okay, rook g1 was played. Preventing that bishop g4. So my opponent is listening to this. I'm joking. No, my opponent was, was aware of that. But I think I can castle now. I think I can castle now, which I'm pretty happy to play. I'm taking an h2 at some point. The, the question is, well, I have to really make sure I'm not too greedy and not take pawn after pawn, because if I just focus on taking pawns, my opponent is going to get their pieces out and I will find myself in trouble. Not only because of taking pawns, but I'm taking the pawns on h2 and g2, which open files against my king. I, I don't think I'm going to take the pawn on h2 anytime soon. I think I'm going to play rook e8 check. Um, bishop f5, trying to trade pieces. My opponent probably wants some sort of um, queen trap with rook g3 at some point. Um, which I, I can understand. I'm going to play rook e8 now. Natural moves. I am 13 seconds. I do have 13 seconds. Which is dangerous, even more so if I'm blindfolded. Um, but you know, it's, it's part of the, part of the show. I play bishop f5 now. I should say as well that normally I play these games with. I'm gonna take on c3. I'm gonna play knight e4. I normally play these games with five second increments rather than three, but I did not find any any game in which it was five plus five. And I only I could only five, five, find five plus three. My goodness. I'm going to focus on the game right now, because if not, I'm going to lose. Oh, king b2 was played. I'm going to play queen. I'm going to play g6. I think g6 is a useful looking move. King b2 defends the pawn. Um, a g6, what does is that I, I want to play queen takes h2. Maybe it's a horrible move. It, could, it, could, it might as well just be a blunder. I have pawns on a7, b7, and c7. I have a rook on e8. I can play rook e6. What am I doing? Okay, this is... This is a sacrifice. Ah, uh, okay. Play bishop e4. Rook h1 was the idea. If rook h1 happens now... I can... I can play queen f5. Gosh, this is difficult. There's a pawn on d4, right? Yeah. 
Okay, if that I have this. Queen g2 and maybe h5 is the, and the idea. Actually, h5 is the threat. If I don't have h5, then I'm just losing. King a1. Okay, h5. Where's that bishop going? Bishop d7? Sacrificing? Goodness gracious. Okay, let me play queen of 3. Queen g5, bishop g6. I'm going to sacrifice my rook for that bishop. I'm up a rook. The rook takes e3. I'm going to do that with no hesitation. g4, okay. And sacrifice. Let's bring the other rook. Everything for the sake of... Wait, isn't there a rook on d1? I don't remember where that rook is. Wait, it's on d1, right? I can take it. I'll find out soon. Hmm, I should have visualized that. If I had more time, I would, of course, invest. But given that I don't. Yeah, it was on d1, goodness. That's a problem. Okay, now I'm threatening queen f6, and that would make my life quite easy. Make pretty easy. Easier. I have a bishop on g6. Queen f2 is in the air. Queen c6 is in the air. Maybe queen c6 was better than king g7. But if queen c5, I have queen c6 and it's better. Okay. I'm going to play rook h8 now. Did I allow queen e7? Queen e7? Yes, I did. I'm going to play queen c6 now. Better, better late than never. Um, against any queen e5, I guess I have king g8. Um, I also have queen f6, but yeah, that's uh, that's a blunder. Queen d6 now. Trading queens would be pretty nice. And actually, I, did I, do I force this? Yeah, I force it. I know queen g5. Okay, so rook h2 now. At least I get to, to do that. Yeah, that's a problem. Queen g3 now. I'm threatening queen f2. And uh, king h7 is also a useful move. Queen f2 now. And now queen takes a2, right? Yes, there we go. Good game, Robert. That was pretty... I mean, I must say, pretty poor by me in this moment, particularly. I sensed that this was in the air, but for some reason I just couldn't believe that this was blundered by my opponent, so I decided to go for a safe approach. But if I had, once again, if I had more than, you know, 10 seconds, I would have invested that time. Um, interesting, you can see... A player like Magnus Carlsen wouldn't have fallen for that. A player like Magnus Carlsen would have visualized that pretty well. So in that sense, I do have to improve. But on the other hand, I think I put myself, you know, in, in into a calm, solid position when I was in time trouble, which is something that you should also aim to do. If you're down in, in you're, if you're up material and you're down on the clock, you should aim to make things as calm, as simple as possible, because you're down on the clock, you can't afford to invest any time. To go for the most accurate win. You have to really take care of yourself. Um, I would say that probably the most critical moments in this position. Just before we finish the video. Was rook g3. I think rook g3 is a big decision. Probably white has enough compensation. Without sacrificing that rook. Um, I'm assuming that my opponent just really thought that rook h1 was, uh, was going to win. But bishop e4 is saving the day. Rook h1. I, now I just move away my queen. Or take on f3 first. And then after h5, bishop d7 probably has to be played. And after rook e7, maybe bishop a4. Ah, that's not true though. Bishop f3 is in the air. Ah, but queen f1 is in there. Maybe that, that was the best way. Um, here, rook h1 is not possible. <laughs> I failed to do. I failed to see all of this. Actually, it's 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 quite funny. Um, rook h1. I I thought that was possible, but queen takes h1 is there. And definitely, this is a blunder because I, this is just mating. You know, probably like four or five. Uh, but I took on e3, which is bad, and then I could have taken on d1, and this was a little bit um, a little bit scary, but once I, I solidified this and queen f2, once I coordinate my pieces, everything's... the rest is easy. Thank you very much for watching, hope that was instructive, hope you learned something. As I always say, I'm very happy to record these videos as long as they're beneficial, so if you did find it beneficial, if you found, found it instructive, please subscribe.
or watch another of my videos or give a like support this video or channel in one way or another and i'm going to really be uh, appreciated uh, really appreciate it thank you very much have a good day have a nice day